Okay, we're going to be continuing our uh, What Disciples Do series today. We're going to be talking about wrestling with God and also uh, about what that kind of means in our lives and, and how we live out our faith. It is uh, based on our passage there from the Old Testament and the story of Jacob. And uh, it's sort of an interesting uh, story. It's sort of uh, got some twists and turns or may leave us with a few extra questions, but one thing I wanted to do before we really delved into it, I just wanted to kind of go over who Jacob is and remind you that Jacob and Esau were twins. And, uh, you know, uh, it might be able to be said that they started fighting with each other before they were born. And when they were born, it is said that uh, Esau was born first, but Jacob, as Esau was born as and then as Jacob followed Jacob was holding on to the heel he saw his heel so he's kind of a heel grabber he's kind of maybe trying seen as trying to not let Esau get too far ahead or maybe he was trying to come out first and miss the fight so anyway um, the nice thing about it is that uh, for Esau this was pretty a deal because this meant Esau was going to be the firstborn. This meant that he would have a birthright. This meant that he would probably have the blessing of his father and that, you know, that would mean so much, which kind of leaves Jacob in the cold. But Jacob was a pretty wily critter. Jacob uh, didn't let that stop him. And one day when Esau is coming home and he's really hungry after hunting, uh, Jacob has this bowl of stew and Esau's like, feed me, feed me. You know, I, I want some of that. I'm really hungry. And so Jacob catches him in that weak moment. And, well, give me your birthright, and I'll give you the soup. And so it was. In that moment of weakness, or at that moment, uh, Esau was willing to trade his birthright for some soup. And then later on, as uh, it looked like uh, Esau was still going to get his father's blessing, uh, that he would be able to still be the one to receive the blessing, which would still make uh, a big difference in how things worked in the family. Well, let's just say that Isaac really liked Esau. Esau was Isaac's favorite, and uh, Rebecca, uh, well, Jacob was Rebecca's favorite. And Rebecca overheard that uh, Isaac was hungry and Esau was going to get something to eat and that uh, if he would bring uh, Isaac the food, that uh, he would bless him and offer the blessing to uh, Esau. And so she goes to Jacob, she says, I'm gonna cook some food and we're gonna feed him. We're gonna kinda wrap you, put you in some clothing. We're gonna put some wool on your arms because Esau was known for being really hairy, hairy, hairy. And so we're gonna try to fool Isaac into believing it's Esau and that way he will bless you and sure enough that's the way it works out. So there's a lot of give and take, there's a lot of stuff but what I want you to take away from that story is that Jacob's not a perfect person. Jacob has done some questionable things <coughs> in his life. Yet here a little bit later in the story we see that uh, Jacob is uh, Jacob is going to run into God. Jacob is going to have an encounter where he really has to deal with who God is, what his faith is, who he is, all those things. But the one thing I want you to take away from, especially in the idea that Jacob is not a perfect person, and this is what I believe is the real good news of this story, is that we all mess up. In some ways, we are all like Jacob. But God still wants us to be a part of God's story. God loves us, and God sent Jesus to redeem us. So our passage today, Jacob is all alone at night, and he ends up wrestling with a man until daybreak. And as the fight goes on, Jacob begins to realize that the, that the man that he is wrestling just may be God. Eventually, the man says, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but you'll be called Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. So Jacob called the place where they wrestled Peniel, 
which means face of God. And Jacob ended up declaring, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. And that's just kind of a summary of Genesis 32, 24, 28, and 30. I'd like to say, this is an interesting story because uh, they wrestle all night long. And while they do this, two things end up happen, happening. The stranger blesses Jacob. He gives Jacob a blessing. But the stranger also strikes him and leaves him with a limp. The Bible describes the stranger as a man. But as we have seen, Jacob becomes convinced that he was wrestling with God. And he declared for I have seen God face to face. And like I say, this, this passage may leave a whole lot of unanswered questions, but the takeaway that we should have from this image of Jacob wrestling with God, well, I think it can be a very powerful metaphor. A very powerful metaphor for understanding our relationship with God as followers of Jesus, as disciples. Because there are going to be times... There are going to be times where we are going to really feel like we need to wrestle with God. Or there may be some times that we may be left grappling with our faith and needing to reach out to God. Interacting and wrestling with God can actually be a very good thing. It is a sign, that I believe, that we actually have an active relationship and that God that God is in our lives, that God is the focus of our faith. It is something that we take to heart each and every day. That we truly appreciate the gift we have been given through Jesus Christ. And maybe a very, very strong picture of how God can meet us where we are. God will meet us where we are, geographically, spiritually, physically. God is there. God's love for us never ends. God is with us, especially in the midst of our brokenness. As disciples, especially during these times of struggle, we should expect times of wrestling with God. But we need to realize that there are going to be times where we may be wrestling with God in a way we are when we are wrestling and maybe resisting God, maybe trying to put off that thing you feel God's trying to call you to do. But there are also going to be other times where we are going to be wrestling with God as in wrestling with things, but God is alongside of us. There are a lot of things that can come into these pictures of wrestling with God. There are a lot of ways that we can see it. In other words, it's not just when we're denying or resisting God, it can also be when we are lost and needing God, when we are struggling with other things. Now, wrestling with God isn't always as dramatic as this story where we find Jacob wrestling through the night. But have you ever had a restful, restless night? Have you ever had one of those nights that you just couldn't sleep because something was on your mind and you find out that maybe God's trying to tell you something or maybe that you haven't been listening and you need to start listening man I've been there there are those times where you have the longest night because you just can't figure something out you just can't get past that feeling that God is working on you or maybe God is trying to help you if you would just listen. Like I say, it isn't always as dramatic as Jacob, but one of the examples that I go to, and that is of John Wesley. And one of the things we celebrate is John Wesley's Aldergate experience. Now, we should remember that he has already been a preacher. He has already been in ministry. He has already came over here to the United States and went back with his tail tucked. He's got a lot of ministry waters that have run under the bridge, but he's still not got it all sorted out. He's still wrestling with God, if you think about it. So during his Alder Gate experience, uh, it was a moment that was, would reshape not only his faith, but his life. And on uh, May 14th, 1738, I think there may be 
previous slide. Yes. He wrote this in his journal. In the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street where one was reading Luther's preface to the Epistle of the Romans. Now, what I want you to take away from that part of what he is saying was he was going to go to something that would probably be very close to the men's breakfast or a Bible study with friends or family. This is where he and his friends gathered and they studied the Bible. But notice what it says. He didn't want to go. He unwillingly went. In other words, he wasn't enthused. He was probably wrestling a little bit with, do I really want to do this? Anybody feel that way before they came to church? You don't have to raise your hands. <laughs> I know that I have in the past. But anyway. So he unwillingly goes. So this is what happens. About a quarter before nine, when he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warm. In other words, something in his heart changed. God did something for him. Kind of like when Jacob was wrestling and the stranger slash God blessed him. Okay, one more. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, he, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Once again, that was what he wrote in his journal that day. In other words, he overcame that desire to not go. He overcame that unwillingness or that lack of desire to go. And by doing that, God was able to do great things. That's sort of probably something that's a little bit more like we may experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And being disciples, being followers of Christ will offer us a whole lot of opportunities. Opportunities to reach out to God in our day-to-day -day lives. And sometimes it may be in moments of prayer. And as our gospel reading said today that we should persist in prayer, we should give prayer the opportunity to fill our lives. We should persist in prayer. That gives us a way to reach out to God where we may not actually have to be wrestling. We are given the gift. We are giving the privilege to, prayer, to pray. But it may be in moments of prayer, praise, and devotion. And other times it may feel like we are wrestling with God. But hey, that's what it's all about. It may be something that we're struggling with. It may be something that we're not sure what we believe, or it may be something in our relationships with each other or God. It may be something at work or at home. Maybe something about church, or maybe just a big picture issue, like what's going on in the world, what's going on in society. There are all those things that we may be wrestling with. But here's the deal. We don't have to do it alone. Because once again, it always it shouldn't always be seen as wrestling against God. We can also see it as wrestling with God alongside us through Jesus Christ. So we shouldn't be surprised when those moments happen. And we shouldn't shy away from those moments of staying in relationship with God. They are all part of that relationship. It's all part of being disciples of Jesus Christ. So don't be afraid to wrestle with God because you may be surprised by the many blessings that it may offer. Jacob's wrestling match left him with a limp, but it also gave him a great blessing that changed his life. Wrestling with God allowed Jacob to see God face to face. We've got one more slide that is from the great evangelist D.L. Moody, who wrote, he wrote a bunch of notes in his Bible and Fortunately, somebody went through his Bible, copied them all down, put them in a book. Pretty neat deal. You can see what he thought as he read the Bible. And this is what he said. On this side of eternity, we shall never be perfect. Jacob limped. And then he says, better limp to heaven than leap to hell. Hallelujah! <laughs> I was just going to say, can I get an amen for D.L. Moody? <laughs> amen. amen. All right. Thank you all very much. <laughs>